U.S. and allies ought to give Ukraine more help in hitting bases in Russia. U.S. Representative A full-scale war continues in Ukraine and the Russian Federation has clearly escalated the confrontation by launching a new offensive in the Kharkiv region. Russian strikes on Kharkiv became a signal that it was time for the United States to help the Ukrainian army strike the bases of Russian invaders in Russia. Former U.S. Deputy Secretary of State for Political Affairs Victoria Nuland shared this opinion during an interview with ABC News. I think the time has come for this because Russia has clearly escalated this war, including, as you said at the very beginning, attacking the second city of Ukraine, Kharkov, which is not on the front line, and trying to destroy it without having to put boots on the ground, she said. Nuland said that's why she believes the time has come to give the Ukrainians more help in striking these bases inside Russia. The former Deputy Secretary of State emphasized that bases in the Russian Federation must be legitimate targets. They need to be able to stop these Russian attacks that are coming from bases inside Russia. The United States and our allies ought to give them more help in hitting Russian bases, which heretofore we have not been willing to do. Those bases ought to be fair game whether they are where missiles are being launched from or where they are where troops are being supplied from. Newland added, Ukrainian officials have reportedly launched a massive lobbying effort on Capitol Hill this month in an attempt to pressure the White House on its army policy. Its legislators have claimed that Russia's recent advances in the Kharkov region were as a result of Kiev's inability to deliver preemptive cross-border strikes. Newland accused Moscow of escalating the conflict with the operation and claimed that its goal was to decimate the city without ever having to put a boot on the ground. She claimed that Russian forces have flattened a third of Kharkov already. She reasoned that US permission to attack Russian bases under these circumstances would not be escalatory. Why Ukraine could not stop the Russian offensive on Kharkiv, Spiegel named three reasons. The Russian army opened a new front in the Kharkiv region, and although the offensive was expected, it still turned out to be successful. The publication Der Spiegel analyzed the reasons why Ukraine failed to prevent the advance of the Russian Federation. As the publication notes, the element of surprise can be immediately excluded from the list of reasons since there have been warnings about the attack for a long time. Moreover, the Ukrainian intelligence previously stated that the attack began according to a known schedule about which all necessary authorities were informed. According to military expert Gustav Gressel from the European Council on Foreign Relations, no later than May the 4th, six days before the Russian offensive began, it was clear that an attack was imminent, writes De Spiegel. The publication notes that three points were decisive in this situation. The first is the shortage of weapons. The prerequisite for Russian success was that the army was able to unhinderedly concentrate troops in the border zone. At the same time, the publication notes that one of the reasons why Ukraine was unable to prevent the deployment of the Russian armed forces was the United States' ban on the use of weapons supplied by them on Russian territory. With American HIMARS missile launchers, the Ukrainians could stop the enemy before an attack begins. But since the Russians were stationed outside Ukrainian territory, they were safe. Spiegel emphasizes. The second mistake, writes Spiegel, was the problem with the defense lines. It is noted that three lines of defense were to be built along the entire 2,000-kilometer front. According to the government, about 800 million euros have been allocated for these purposes. Only in April, President Zelensky inspected the construction of defensive structures in the Kharkov region. But Ukrainian officer Denis Yaroslavsky from the city of Volchansk said in a post on the social network Facebook, the first line of defense and there weren't even mines, the publication writes. And although the head of the region, Oleg Sinegubov, has already asked the subcontractors involved in the construction of defense facilities to clarify the situation, however, as Spiegel writes, this applies only to the third line of defense which was built by civilian companies and which the Russians have not yet reached. Front lines, on the contrary, are built by engineering troops or completely ordinary units. As a military official explained, the first line is located at a distance of 1.5 to 5 or 6 kilometers from the border, so concreting is out of the question. 
There are also not enough mines to protect the borders. However, in some cases, even the simplest installations are lacking at the border, the publication writes. Thus, military blogger Yuri Butusov wrote from Volchansk that he saw no trenches or shelters there, although the city is located five kilometers from the Russian border. And the third factor of failure for Ukraine was the lack of troops. The Ukrainians have enough soldiers to man the front line of defense. However, unlike the Russians, they lack units that could be placed behind them. Therefore, gaps in the defense are more difficult to close, military expert Franz Stefan Gadi said in an interview with Spiegel.